Before this tutorial starts, if you have more experience with After Effects and just want the TLDR quick version, skip to this timecode. If not, Hello, I'm Ninjaistic Ninja, and if you're like me, then you're a fan of impact frames and want to implement them into your MMVs and manga edits. If you're like me, you also suck at drawing and don't want to spend your time creating impact frames the traditional way. If that is the case, then this tutorial may be of use because I've been including my own little impact frames in my videos since my second MMV, um, and since then my method hasn't really changed. I'd just like to put a quick disclaimer to say that the method in question probably is not the best way to do it, given how improvised it is, um, but it is the way I've been doing it all of this time, and I figured I'd share the way I'm doing it. And, yeah, I mean, there, there are plenty of tutorials to watch, but this is the way I'm doing it. It's quick and easy, and I'll go through it step by step for those that don't have as much After Effects experience. I'll also try to include timestamps in the video for those who want to skip ahead, and a download link to the project file I'll be using so that you can follow along if you'd like to. Without further ado, let's get into After Effects. So jumping right into After Effects, we've got three animation set up, where I'm going to be utilizing three different types of blurs. Uh, for this first one, we've got Itadori punching a guy in the head. Very uncalled for, but that's fine. We're just here to give it some impact. Um, and so what we're going to do first and foremost is we're going to find where we want to add the impact frames. Uh, now again, this is up to you, but for this tutorial, we're going to be putting it I say two frames into here because it kind of transitions nicely. So two frames in, we're going to create a new solid. We're gonna call it impact background, or you can call it whatever you want, doesn't really matter. I'm gonna put it there. And then you can kind of pick how many frames you want the impact frames to last. Obviously it's gonna depend on what frame rate you're animating at. For me, I animate at 24 frames per second for 90% of my stuff. So, for something like this, I think anywhere between three to five, maybe six frames is fine. So for this, we'll do five. So one, two, three, four, five, like that. Um, and then what we're going to do right off the bat is we're going to click, right click on it. We're going to go to layer styles and we're going to click on the color overlay and that's going to make it red. And then we're going to go into the layer styles menu, go into color overlay, and then we're going to change the color of the background um, and basically all we're going to do is we're gonna keyframe it so it alternates between white and black to make it flashy um, again this much is is very much up to you uh, so for this I'm gonna do white I'm gonna click the little stopwatch here to create a keyframe and then we're gonna do white okay, again another keyframe for white and we're gonna switch to black which create another keyframe and then go there, create another keyframe and then end it on white. I like to end it on white as a color because it kind of gives it that extra flash at the end of the impact frame. Uh, so if we play it back, you can see the effects we're kind of getting straight away to give the punch a little bit of impact, but obviously this is just the background. Um, obviously when it comes to this, hypothetically speaking, you could make it white, black, white, black, white, but we're trying to, you know, give movements some extra oomph, some extra impact. We're not trying to give people seizures. So just kind of do it in moderation, be smart about it. I think, you know, a good way to do it is if you can't watch the background back without really having to blink or look away, you're probably overdoing it. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so now we've got that done, we're gonna make another solid. On top, we're going to make it grey, and we're going to call it Impact Overlay. And as the name suggests, we're going to have it over the top of the panels this time. And we're going to have it kind of same amount as the Impact Background, and we're going to kind of sandwich the uh, thing we're animating in between. Uh, so right off the bat, we're going to change the blending mode. If you right click here, go to blending mode, I'm going to change it to soft light. And then we're going to right click again, going to go to layer styles, and then gradient overlay. And then we're going to go into the gradient overlay menu, I'm going to go to the blend mode, and we're going to change that to hard mix. And right off the bat, you can kind of see uh, the initial effect it has on the panel, it kind of makes it look a little bit rough. If you play it back, you can see it gives it a little bit of texture, gives the 
the lines are kind of certain look. Um, like there's still one more step to really give it the impact frame look. And what that step is, is to go into, so we're going to go into the pre-comp, where we can see the uh, actual individual parts. Um, and now you can, if you want to, you can add uh, the blur on the actual whole pre-comp itself, but I think it's, at least in my experience, it's more effective to kind of add it to the individual elements. Um, we're going to add some blur um, to where the impact frame actually starts, which is here uh, for five frames. So we're going to go into the effects column on the right. We're going to type in a radial fast blur. We're going to put that on to the uh, layer. We're going to change where the center is. So since he's punching here, we'll put it here. We're going to up the amount. And we're going to keyframe it so that it only lasts during the impact frames. So put it there, turn it off there. So it lasts for five frames. So one, two, three, four, five. Keyframe, one, two, zero. There we go. So now, if you play this back, you can see right away the kind of effect that the blur has on the panel with the hard mix overlay. So we're going to quickly do the same thing for the helicopter man. So we're just going to copy and paste the effect um, here. There we go. And then we're going to change the center to there. And go back. And boom. Now you've kind of set everything up. There's only one last thing you really need to do. And that is to keyframe the color of the gradient. And we're going to see pretty quickly how this can affect it. Um, if we just go to color, we go to edit gradient. You can see as I change the white to make it darker, you can see how it affects the look of the impact frame. Um, so this is just the uh, bottom of the gradient. But if we change this one, the top of it, you can also see it affects like this. So you can see pretty quickly how we're going to approach this. Um, and essentially, we're just going to keyframe it the same way as the, with the background. We're going to put a keyframe. Could edit the gradient. And this part is very much up to you. I like to kind of do it where it starts kind of subtle. Go to the next frame. Then kind of have it a little bit more visible. And then the background goes to black. So we're going to go to lighter colors. Darker colors, start darker. Oops. Yeah. And then make it more visible. And then we're going to end it with adding some red. So if you just go a little bit there, you can see you can add some red to the impact frame as well. And so if we play this back, boom. That punch had some impact. And adding a little bit of red, it does add a little bit of brutality to it as well, if you'd like to do that. But again, it's purely up to you. It's quick, it's easy, it's simple. Okay, so next up, we're going to be adding impact frames to this. We're going to be going through a little bit faster than the first one, since we've already kind of gone through the steps. So we're just going to go straight into it. So two frames in, we're going to add the impact background. Again, you can call it what you want. Just going to do that. Similar to the first one, we're going to have for five frames. So one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to change the background. Now, I'm just going to do it the same as the first one, just for simplicity's sake. So we're going to have it start color white, white, black, black, and then end on white for that flashy end. And then we're going to create another solid on top, going to call it impact overlay, going to change the color to gray, um, going to change the blending mode to soft lights, going to have it last the same amount as the bottom, so we kind of sandwich the panels in between, I'm going to right click, going to go to layer styles, going to go to gradient overlay, change to hard mix, and now we're going to add the directional blur, 
So this one is a different blur than the radial, but it's the same kind of idea. Uh, we're going to throw it onto the subject. I'm going to change the direction so it's in the direction they're actually being kicked. And we're going to have it last uh, the length of the impact frames. So it starts here. One, two, three, four, five. Ends there. I'm going to put key drops. Put that there. Then you can eventually let it in. And then same for the bottom one. Blow on. Choose a direction. Uh, and for this particular one, I'm actually going to have it start earlier because they kind of fly into the frame. Um, so one, two, three, four, five. Thing ends here, and then keyframe, then end the blur. So now, if you go back, you can see right away we've kind of got the effect um, already. So then, the last step is just to keyframe the gradient overlay. So again, this you can kind of choose how you want to do it. But just, I'm just going to do it like kind of this. Then have it become more visible in the next frame. Like this. And then I'm going to have it kind of dim. And then I'm going to change it to make more bad um, and again this is something you can fully kind of customize you can also change the direction of the blurs the amount of blur is another factor um this is kind of the basic setup and similar to the last one we're going to add a little bit of red as well just to give it that uh, sense of kind of brutality almost um and then just like that bam gives the kick some impact now it kind of looks like it hurts a little bit more than it did before so for our final example we're going to be adding impact frames to Chainsaw Man killing the Cockroach Devil. Um, and for this one, unlike the others, we're going to switch it up slightly. We're going to have the impact frame start as soon as it switches to this. And we're going to have the impact frames themselves last probably three or four frames. Uh, so watch the bat. And again, we just quickly do it. Impact, background. Have it last as long as you'd like to. Again, for this, I'll do three, I reckon. Three. One, two, three. Just like that. Because it's quick. Uh, and then a solid on top. You can make it grey. Impact overlay. Make it soft light. Make it the same as the impact background. Uh, also quickly need to do the color overlay part we need to animate the background so we're going to go here you can't really see the background for this one but we're just going to put it as uh, black black white so black black and white like so and then we're going to add the gradient overlay on top we're going to change the blend mode to hard mix and then we're going to add the blur. So the blur we're going to be adding is radial blur. And there's two different ones you can pick. Um, I don't think it really matters, at least from my experience. So we're just going to take this one, put it on Denji. And we're going to change, first of all, we're going to change the center point. So it kind of spins more from within there. Um, and then something you might notice, and this is a problem you might run into with radial fast blur as well, where you can see the blur kind of gets cut off at the edge of like the border of the image. So what we can do to counteract that is we can look for an effect called grow bounds under the utility. And if we put that onto our subjects, put it above radial blur here, and we do this, you can see as the name suggests, it grows the bounds, and so it doesn't become an issue anymore. Uh, so we're going to up the blur a little bit, like this. And 17, I reckon. So one, two, three. I'm going to keep it going just because 
it keeps spinning like this and then we're also going to add blur to the cockroach himself but I don't think radial blur is going to work so we can do a mix of blurs we're going to put directional onto this one so we're going to do this like this kind of direction I reckon then one one two and there we go so now it's like that and then if we go back to the main composition now we just need to keyframe the actual gradient color um so as we've done before i'm gonna have it start dark since this background's supposed to be kind of dark like this i'm actually gonna add a little bit of red to this one since he's brutally killing the cockroach double uh, so keyframe that Going to change it slightly for the second one, make it a little bit lighter. Like this. And then have the last one be a lot lighter. Like this. Ooh. And so as you can see, it works. You've got that nice kind of rotational look. Um, and again, this is something you can adjust. You can change the amount of blur, you can change the center of the blur um but yeah i think it works quite nicely okay so here's the tldr version first create a new solid for the impact background and have it last for as many frames as you'd like it to give it a color overlay and keyframe the color between black and white so it's flashy but not too flashy because we're not trying to blind people then create another solid on top and change the blending mode to soft to light then give it a gradient overlay and change that blending mode to hard mix after that, add some blur on the individual layers, whether it be radial fast blur, directional blur, or radial blur, and keyframe the amount so it's visible during the impact frames. Lastly, keyframe the color of the gradient's overlay to customize the look of the impact frames. And boom, you're done. Just like that. So that's going to wrap it up for the tutorial today. I hope you found it helpful. Um, if you did, let me know in the comments below. If you didn't find it helpful, also, let me know in the comments below. Uh, I'd appreciate any feedback. This is my first time making a video like this. Uh, so I'm sure it's rough around the edges, but I did work kind of hard on it. Uh, so I would like to know if it was good or not. Um, if you have any extra questions, leave them in the comments below. I'll try to reply to them if I can. Um, also, check out the Patreon. You get early access to these kind of videos and uh, access to a patron exclusive Discord where I'll probably be able to give better and more detailed answers. And that's about it. Thanks for watching.